Disney World in Florida is one of my favorite places to go, and weirdly, until about two years ago, I was never really that fussed about going, and then I went once, and suddenly it's one of the only places I ever want to go. I have now been four times in the last two years. I'm very lucky, I know, I'm lucky that what I do for work means I get to go for that sometimes, but as someone who's been quite a few times, very recently, I'm gonna give my ranking of every ride in the Disney World parks, so either you've been and you will argue with me, or you're planning to go, and maybe this will help you figure out what you want to do on your trip. Let's start with my favourite park, Animal Kingdom. So Animal Kingdom, it's all about the animals. The hint is in the name. So let's start with Kilimanjaro Safaris. I have done this safari twice, and the second time was so much better than the first. The first time we went was in the middle of the day, right? The temperature was at its hottest, and a little tip, the animals prefer coming out when it's cooler weather. So the second time we went near to the end of the day, and we saw so many more animals just roaming around, okay? And I'm an animal lover. The giraffes made me cry. I'm not afraid to admit that. I love giraffes, I love most animals, and if you like animals, this is God tier. So typically I would say do water rides early in the day and only on hot days, otherwise you will be wet and cold for hours and it really does ruin the experience of the parks. That's what happened to me one day at Universal, I did the Popeye water ride, and those drying machines do not work very well, let me tell you. Anyway, the Cali River Rapids are slightly less intense than the Popeye ride, you don't get quite so wet. I would still say maybe bring a spare change of clothes if you know you're gonna do the water rides and keep them in a locker, or wear a poncho on the ride. Definitely buy your ponchos online before your trip because they are very expensive in the parks. The ride itself is fine, I'm not the world's biggest water ride fan, so we'll go B tier, I think. So Dinosaur is a little bit dated now. Some of the pre-show ages it a bit. Plus the ride itself is kind of in need of an update. Like it's still fun, don't get me wrong. Definitely if you have younger people and less thrill-seeking people in your group who maybe don't love roller coasters but still want something with that's fast and with a bit of a kick, Dinosaur is a decent option, okay? What I will say is that the photo location on this ride is in kind of a lull, so it's really easy to just look bored in the picture. Overall, this ride is fun once or twice, but it does get old quickly. I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie when it comes to rides, so I'm gonna go C tier for Dinosaur. All right, first of all, Pandora in Animal Kingdom is the best section of any park. Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios is great too for Star Wars fans, but the detail in Pandora, next level. Particularly if you get a chance to see it in the dark after the sun sets, it blows your mind, it's breathtaking. The Navi River ride in Pandora is my favorite of all of those relaxing river rides. As much as I love pirates in Magic Kingdom and Frozen Ever After in Epcot, the Navi River ride is next level beautiful. The music, the lights, the decor, this is an A tier ride. Sticking with Pandora, Flight of Passage, this isn't a ride. Okay, this is an experience. When I heard this was just a 3D experience in front of a big screen, I honestly underestimated it a lot. The smells, the sounds, the visuals, it is breathtaking. Like you cannot help but scream for joy when it feels like you're flying. And it's a really good amount of time too. Like some rides, roller coasters in particular, I feel like for how long you line up, you just don't get enough time experiencing the ride, but not Flight of Passage. It's a really good amount of time. You really immerse yourself in the experience and get lost in it. And I want to make it clear, I don't love the Avatar movies that much, but this ride, if I were a millionaire and I had a big house with plenty of space, I would have a room that was just this ride, so I could do it over and over and over again. The queuing area outside is very pretty, once you get inside it's fairly industrial, and the pre-show is fun the first time, but it goes on for a while, so on your second or third ride you sort of get a bit tired of it. Anyway, the ride, god tier, 10 out of 10, no notes. Alright, this ride is kind of like Big Thunder Mountain, it's a roller coaster going up a mountain and then back down again, but I like it better than Big Thunder Mountain. I think the theming is better, and it has a surprise in it too, which I just think levels the whole thing up. They also got lucky near the time the park closes. Uh, we were able to get on and off again with basically a two minute wait like four times in a row. And that's such a fun memory of Expedition Everest, just doing it over and over again. It's an A tier ride, big fan, very close to being God tier. So this brings us to the end of Animal Kingdom. There are other rides and experiences that are either aimed at way younger people than me, so I just haven't ridden them or I just didn't get the chance to. So I haven't ranked them, but this is my ranking so far as we move on to Hollywood Studios. Let's start strong in Hollywood Studios. Toy Story Mania is so much fun. Carnival games on a motorized track? Sign me up. 
I like that it's not just a sit here and shoot ride as well, which a lot of these kinds of rides are. There's variations with hoop toss or shooting the plates. It feels genuinely like an assortment of carnival games. And it's made so much better if you are with somebody you want to be competitive against, like a partner or a sibling or a good friend. So Toy Story Mania is A tier. It's not far off being God tier, but honestly my arm hurts after every time I ride it. So that's bringing it down a little bit. Sticking with Toy Story, this might get some hate. I don't like the Slinky Dog Dash roller coaster. It's like it's not calm enough to be a chilled out coaster, but it's not exciting enough to be an adrenaline fueled ride. It's in this like weird middle ground. And if you've ridden Flight of the Hippogriff at Universal, kind of feels like that. Some faster bits, some uncomfortably abrupt turns. It's just, it's it's not for me. It's D tier, I'm afraid. In the other direction, I know that a lot of people don't love Muppet Vision. Some people are calling for it to be reskinned or changed into something else, but I would say it's pretty good. It's fun, it doesn't take itself too seriously. The 3D technology, don't get me wrong, it is terrible. It definitely, it can give you a headache. But if you want to take a seat, and get some air conditioning for like 15 minutes. This show is the way to do it. That said, as shows and experiences at Disney go, it kind of lacks the wow factor. Unless you're a big Muppet fan. I'm not, so we're gonna go C tier. So if you've been to Disneyland Paris, Rock and Roller Coaster is the old version of what has now become Avengers Flight Force. It's very fast, definitely one for the adrenaline junkies, and it does go upside down too. Is it the only roller coaster on Disney property that goes upside down? I think it might be. And it goes upside down despite the fact that you're allowed to bring bags on it and they're not even like strapped in, which absolutely freaked me out the first time I went on it. It's good fun. I definitely think the theme is a little bit outdated. So we're gonna go B tier for this ride. I need to confess something for a moment. Despite visiting the parks four times, I've actually never done Runaway Railway. It just, it never happened, okay? I'm not sure why, I just, I felt like I needed to address it. Feel free to judge me in the comments. Maybe next time. Moving into Galaxy's Edge and all the Star Wars stuff now, the outside of Smuggler's Run with the Millennium Falcon is gorgeous. Like, as a Star Wars fan, I literally die when I see it. Yes, literally, I know what literally means. I'm using it, I literally die. The ride itself is... Fun, but kind of forgettable. Do some sticks and you press some buttons to help navigate the ship, but you never really feel like you're impacting the experience enough, which leaves you kind of wanting more when you come off it. But the theming is enough to make up for that, so I would give this a B tier ranking. I love Star Tours. Okay, considering the wait time is usually quite low, it's always a firm filler gap ride. If you're waiting for, I don't know, the last few minutes before your lightning lane or your dinner reservation, or if you've just done a long line and you don't want to jump into another really long line. Star Tours is a great filler ride, okay? And, and it's really fun as a ride, okay? Like in its own right. I don't mean to do it disservice calling it a filler ride. Plus when I found out that there were different runs for the ride, like you can get different characters, visit different planets. It really leveled it up for me because I want to collect them all. Ultimately, it's just a simulator. You just sit and watch the 3D screen and the seats move a bit, but as simulators go, it's a really good one. I'm gonna give this one, it's between an A and a B tier. I think because I called it a filler, I'm gonna have to go B tier, but it's close to being A, okay? I really do like it. Rise of the Resistance has the best pre-ride show of any ride at Disney. Maybe any ride I've been on. Like Cosmic Rewind and Epcot is close behind, but Rise of the Resistance is better. The set pieces, the locations, the cast members being in character. It is so immersive. The ride itself is pretty fun. Definitely leveled up if you're a Star Wars fan. Like for someone who doesn't like Star Wars, the ride itself is fine and there's some cool bits, but its theming really elevates it. When the animatronics work, they really step it up, okay? But that is hit and miss. In my experience, the animatronics go down one in every three rides. I would say when everything is working, and you get this ride in its full swing, it is God tier. Particularly because I am a big Star Wars fan. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. Tower of Terror, you have my heart. Like this ride never, ever, ever gets old. Certain roller coasters, you can come off it and say, you know what? I've done that enough for today or for this trip. Now, Tower of Terror is not a roller coaster, but I never feel like I have ever done it enough, right? As soon as I'm off it, I'm like, I could do that again. Fun story, Tower of Terror was actually the first Disney ride I ever went on as like an older person. Like I was a teenager in Disneyland in California. I went on Tower of Terror. I had previously been to Disneyland Paris when I was eight, but I don't really remember any of it. So it doesn't count. But Tower of Terror in California was my first Disney ride as a human who can remember his experiences. And I have been obsessed with it since then. Of course, the California one has since been reskinned to be a Guardians ride now, but the Florida Tower of Terror has all of the classic Twilight Zone theming. And it's just so fun. Every Every time, God tier. 
And that brings us to Epcot. So if you've done Flight of Passage and Star Tours, and then you come to this ride, it's a pretty disappointing simulator. Like, it's fine, but it definitely needs updating. It just, it doesn't have the wow factor that some other similar rides at Disney World have got. So with that in mind, we have to go C tier. It could have been D tier, but, but D tier, I feel like I need to actively dislike it. And this is just meh. This isn't a ride, but manatees are my favorite animal in the world. And I never thought I'd see them because they don't come anywhere near the UK. And then the first time I went to Disney, I went to Epcot and I saw these two manatees and I cried. They just, they are majestic. I love them so much. God tier, if there was a higher tier, I would put the manatees there. I might cry just thinking about them, okay? 90% of the reason I keep going back to Disney is just to see these manatees again. Test track is very fast, but it doesn't have much else going for it. The theming is dull. Like there's a cool design your own car feature in the pre-show, but the car you ride in is just a generic car, so it's a bit meh. Like your design pops up on a screen at one point, but besides that, it's... I think the fastest ride in Disney World, correct me if I'm wrong, but fast isn't enough. Like the ride is honestly kind of boring, save for maybe the two seconds that you go really, really fast on a straight track. So this has to be D tier for me, I'm afraid. This little river ride around the pyramid in the Mexican part of Epcot is really cute because the setting is cute. Like the three caballeros bit went completely over my head, if I'm honest. And the actual ride is chill, but leaves a lot to be desired. Like considering the other calm little river rides in Disney that are much better, this, this has to be C tier. Speaking of much better river rides, the Frozen ride is so fun. Like if you like Frozen or you have kids with you, this is maybe the perfect ride. The music, the animatronics, the theming, even the waiting area where you line up through Arendelle is really pretty. And there's a part of the ride that really gets your blood flowing with something exciting. I won't spoil it for anyone who's watching Watching this and hasn't been on it yet. It's not quite as good as the Navi River Ride in my opinion, but it's definitely close. I think I just personally prefer the theming of Pandora over the theming of Frozen, but it is still an A tier ride. Mission Space is deceptively fun. Like there are two versions of it, right? A chill version and a more intense one. And I've only ever done the intense one. But the idea is you're in a rocket going into space and then you slingshot around the moon and head towards Mars, right? And like Smuggler's Run, each of the four people in the carriage have their own jobs to do, which is, it says jobs, you just press buttons when they light up, okay? The interactive part of it is pretty pointless, honestly, but the way when you're taking off in that rocket ship, the way they simulate G-Force during the takeoff procedure, it's a hell of a feeling, okay? After the takeoff sequence, the ride itself sort of chills out a little bit, like there's plenty of lights and noises to keep you stimulated, but the first few seconds are very exciting, and it's enough to earn it a space in the B tier. I would say. Confession number two, I have never seen Ratatouille. Feel free to unsubscribe. I know I have let a lot of you down. And because of that, the theming of the Ratatouille ride is completely lost on me. And so the ride itself, in my opinion, is just a worse version of Rise of the Resistance. Like I know people who adore this ride, say it's their favorite ride at Epcot or even all of Disney. I just, it's not for me, okay? I could easily go to Epcot and just not ride it. In fact, I, I have done, so sorry, it's D tier but I recognize that is very subjective. Do you remember earlier when I said there were rides that needed updating, like Soaring Around the World? None need an update more than this. Considering it's the ride in the big Epcot ball, the focal point of this park, this ride just doesn't hit. Like the educational side of it is fine. And I get that was sort of the point of Walt Disney making Epcot was this kind of thing. But the ride itself feels old and clunky. When they talk about the future stuff, it's just, it's not well done at all. I'm, I'm sorry, this has to go D tier for me as well, I'm afraid. So off the back of a couple of stinkers, we are moving on to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And where do I start with this ride? I go back and forth about whether this is my favorite of all the Disney rides, like Tower of Terror, Flight of Passage, they're both up there. But I think this is the ride I get most excited to go on, mostly because of the music. Remember earlier when I said Star Tours was great because it had different runs and you want to collect them all? Well, the Guardians ride is the same, but with the soundtrack. There are six possible songs that you can get, and it seems like like the first song anyone gets on this ride is always their favorite, at least based on the people I've asked before. My first song was I Ran, and it is 100% my favorite, but I haven't had it again since, which is very frustrating. I have been lucky enough to collect all six songs though, which is top of my CV when I apply for jobs. And the ride itself is so fun. The way the carts break apart, they change direction, so great. One thing I will say, if I could have one criticism about this ride, one slight thing I would change, I would like it to be longer. Not as in I want more of the same. The story of this ride is established well in the pre-show, which is fantastic as a pre-show, by the way. Second best in all of Disney, beaten only by Rise of the Resistance, as I mentioned earlier. But the pre-show does a great job of establishing the story. And then the ride is so 
so fast and so full on that the story just sort of happens around you so quickly that it doesn't really feel fulfilling. Like Hagrid's ride at Universal does a great job at breaking the ride into maybe three parts, giving you breathing space between each section of the ride as it moves the story experience along. The Guardians of the Galaxy ride is sort of non-stop from start to finish, and so if you're not looking in the right place, or if you're screaming too loud that you don't hear the voiceovers, you're sort of miss what's happening. It's still god tier, mind you. That's the only small criticism that I would make to make it better. And I realise I've spoken about Universal rides a lot in this video, so if you want me to rank all of the Universal rides for Orlando in a tier list, let me know in the comments and I'll do that. But for now, moving on to the final park, Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom has quite a few tour rides, if that's what you'd call them, where you just sort of sit and get carried through the world of The Little Mermaid or Peter Pan or The Haunted Mansion. You see characters, animatronics, set pieces, etc. And The Little Mermaid is actually one of the better ones. The music, the setting, it's more atmospheric, you're immersed a little bit more. It's a solid B tier ride, just about. Like, it's good to sit down for a few minutes. Again, kids would probably love this. I, I'm not a kid, nor do I have any. Tron is enthralled. It's so exciting, so full on, and the theming is done very, very well. Great fun. My girlfriend asked to sit at the front both times I've been on this ride, so that was an experience. That said, like Guardians, but even more so, it just sort of passes you by. Like, the story of the race, the competition, the battle, I have no idea how it really unfolds. You're just, you're going fast outside, then you're going fast inside, and then it's over. I mean, it does what it does well, but it doesn't really immerse you in the same way that the very best rides do. Like, it's A tier, I enjoy it, I just, I want more from it. It's obviously a really popular ride because it's new and it's got the latest technology, but I don't think this will stay like absolutely top of the game for as long as maybe Guardians does. I love a pun, okay? And I'm not sorry. It's just who I am. I'm the kind of guy who when someone says, I'm hungry, I say, hi, hungry, I'm Brett. So Jungle Cruise, my kind of ride, okay? That said, the guide's jokes can only carry the ride so far and fake animal animatronics along the river get old quite quickly. It's fun the first time, but you probably aren't going to want to go back on it again a second time or a third time unless maybe you have young children. If only they weren't in a river and they were in the C tier. C, C tier. Get it? Told you I love a pun. <laughs> I'll see myself out. I really hope someone at least like exhaled through their nose at that pun. You know how I said earlier that there were lots of rides that just sort of take you around the world of that theme. And Little Mermaid was one of the better ones. Peter Pan is one of the worst ones. Now, full disclosure, I also haven't seen Peter Pan, so maybe it's just lost on me. But the Peter Pan ride, the only time I rode it, I was very bored. And it broke down part way around. So I'm sorry, Peter Pan. It's D tier from me. This is a fun roller coaster. It's a fairly basic roller coaster, which doesn't mean it's relaxing. It just, it goes fast, it goes up and down and round the mountain. It's good, but it's straightforward. There were no frills, there were no unexpected twists. Where certain rides might go backwards or shock you with something, this doesn't. It just, it goes fast. It's a good roller coaster, but it's not a great roller coaster. It's very similar to Expedition Everest and Animal Kingdom, except that I prefer Expedition Everest. So this one is going to go in the B tier. I think Florida's Space Mountain might be my least favourite Space Mountain. That might be unpopular, I don't know, but it feels old and clunky, honestly. Like, Paris and California are both better and smoother and more fun, in my opinion. Like, I think California's was a Star Wars-themed hyperspace mountain for a while, and then it changed back to Space Mountain. Paris, I believe, is still the Star Wars theme. But yeah, the Orlando one, just, it feels rickety, like it needs an upgrade, and so I think it's C tier for me. But like, a low one even? It could have been D tier. I really like The Haunted Mansion. It's another one where you just sit down and go through the sets and see the props, but it's really well themed. Like the spooky but not scary line is towed really well, so if you have young people with you, they'll probably enjoy it, so long as they're not too young. The theming, the pre-show in particular, is really good fun. I would say the line often feels longer than I think it should be for this ride, but if you can get on this with a good wait time, I would say it's a solid B-tier ride. You know how I loved Toy Story Mania in Hollywood Studios? But there is something about Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger. I just don't like it at all. It is not as fun or as engaging. It is repetitive and boring. Like there are bright colours and lights and loud noises that disguise a pretty average experience. And 
And look, I'm not just bitter that my girlfriend beat me both times we went on it, okay? I'm not. Honestly, if this ride went, and this might not be popular, I don't know, I wouldn't care. D tier. Before Tron came to Magic Kingdom, Seven Dwarfs might have been my favorite Magic Kingdom ride. It still might be, it's close. Like, like it's a really fun roller coaster. I don't care about Snow White and the theming, to be honest. Although at the slower moments, hearing the hi-ho song is fun to whistle along to. But I would say this is a really good roller coaster. It's a really good A tier ride. God. I love this ride. It is so relaxing. Magic Kingdom can get really, really busy. And Pirates is my favorite ride to just take a load off, chill out, enjoy the vibes. It's another just sit in the boat and watch the settings and animatronics, but it's a good one. Not like Peter Pan. Although Peter Pan isn't a boat, but you get what I'm saying. Plus, when you come off the Pirates ride, the yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me song will be stuck in your head for ages, days even. But it's good fun. It's a close call between B tier and A tier. I think, I think I might put it in the A tier, you know. D tier, D tier, this ride gives me literal nightmares. It is horrifying. There are only so many times that I can hear the it's a small world after all song without wanting to rip my own ears off and then beat myself to death with them. D tier. D tier. I don't want it. This ride gives me literal nightmares. So the last time I went to Disney World in Florida, we got to the last day of our trip and my girlfriend and I decided to try a really stupid challenge. We wanted to see if we could visit every Disney park and ride all of the most popular rides, as well as meet a bunch of popular characters, as well as a bunch of other stuff, all during the day before our flight left in the evening. It was stressful, we ran a lot, and obviously we made a video about it, so you might wanna watch that one next.